Hello viewer and welcome to Beyond. In today's program we are going to be looking at the motor vehicle industry in Uganda with particular focus on cars. You may have noticed that the number of cars flying Uganda's roads continues to increase on a daily basis, explained perhaps by the ever-increasing jam in the city. Stay with me as we explore this. I'm Marion Alina. Records from Uganda Revenue Authority put the current number of cars in Uganda at over 650. Most of these are in the capital Kampala. The importers of these cars bring in both brand new cars and refurbished cars. But who is buying these cars? We have the working class who are purchasing. We have organizations, ministries, NGOs, uh, and other people in the private sector who are purchasing. In fact, let me say that the issue of owning a car has been demystified now. Even students can purchase cars for those who have, have got side, some side income. People are buying vehicles for, I can give like three reasons. One, showbiz. Somebody saying one is uh, driving a Prado. The other says I should also drive that Prado. Definitely one will also work hard to get that Prado. Believe me. Even if the money is coming from loan, but somebody will see to it that he is driving that Prado. The second reason can be asset financing. Asset financing, it is usually done by banks, most uh, financial institutions. Bank, we have Equity, Bank of Africa, Stanbic. They are all buying vehicles on behalf of customers. They buy like, uh, they pay for the customer 50%, then the 50% is paid for the, by the customer. Then also, there's a high competition by people who are bringing in cars. A customer comes to, to me, so where he wants to buy a car, and he has some money in his pocket. I'll not chase away that customer, I'll just get that money, even if he's buying on loss, such that the vehicle is taken. About the growing trend of the number, number plates, uh, because uh, these number plates differ. If it's uh, these ordinary black, we call them black and white, those are for private people. Then the, the red number plates are for government. Then white, white and blue is for government institutions. Then red with white, these are for either diplomatic missions and uh, uh, governments, uh, projects which assist government. Right now we are at UAS. Mm. Very soon, I know that will also go. Yes. What does this mean? Uh, first of all, it indicates that uh, the industry is booming, the business is going up, you know, because we clear uh, more than 300 vehicles per day. So it depends on the importations we get. So the more vehicles come, the more number plates we issue out. So I don't think we have uh, any control over that because if I, I deal in cars and I benefit, why shouldn't I import? If you look at the car bonds we have, uh, almost all the car bonds are full of cars um, coming uh, into our country. So that the, the many more vehicles on the road, there are many more people buying vehicles, but why the car industry, why we have got a lot of imports in the car sector, if you want to call it a sector, is because we are a hub for the region. So people import vehicles, store them here in Uganda, and then sell them to Congo, Southern Sudan, Rwanda, and Burundi. That's why we are seeing that the car industry is the fastest growing. So not all of them are getting registered here in Uganda. A number of them are also going out. But as more cars hit Uganda's roads, the old cars are not phased out either. Actually, the majority of people owning old cars will argue that most of these brand new cars are not of good quality. Whether this is true or not, I cannot tell, but let's find out. No, I'm not sure. 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 i Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
alabe indicator bridge that is you one in the pira wanga bwe encouragement ebang kozi ya misango oban ne misolo bo lya saving them in fact that could be one of the reasons as to why there are a bit more accidents because there's a UAB which is already worn out remember we are buying used vehicles from Japan these are not first class vehicles that it is brand new from the factory how do you say brand new because I don't know something new is refurbished or old item I drive a refurbished car it has some few challenges but uh, the ultimate aim would have to be on a new car brand new this is a link to the the income because uh, the majority of our people they have some the middle they belong to the middle income group so that's why those vehicles which they are selling especially those with refurbished uh, bonds they are within the range of 10 million 10 million 15 so especially when I would bring one car someone brings 10 cars and that means they are easily acquired if you, you compare the wholesale and retail retailers usually sell more of the product so it's like those cars are cheaper that's one they are affordable outright because if you want it a situation of uh, saving 100 million is not easy brand new cars are very expensive very expensive because you can find the price of uh, a used car is a bit much more lower than a new car. It can even double it because we of late have been bringing some vehicles here, the Toyota Land Cruisers, 2009, 2008. And we, the price, if, if you compare its price with a uh, Toyota, it's times two. It's a lot. And also brand new vehicles, they look, they say the old manufacture is new, but when you look at it, it doesn't look nice. It's, it's not so much, it doesn't look so much beautiful like these old vehicles we bring because somebody would beautify that old vehicle in Japan, they put extras, they put what, but when you come to a new car, people say this is a new car, they bring it as it is. With the cut throat competition between importers of brand new cars and importers of refurbished ones, accusations and counter accusations are inevitable. Some of these car dealers are pointing accusing fingers at the revenue body blaming it for allowing refurbished cars into the country without any restrictions on the year of manufacture. This, they say, is quite harmful to our environment. We have witnessed situations whereby people import vehicles, especially those reconditioned ones. The very day you buy, then the, the, the following week it knocks down the engine. Let the government of Uganda put a limit to the year of manufacture of vehicles that should come in. Because Uganda has no limit. If it is 8 to 8, the, the air of manufacture of the vehicle is 8 to 8, it will still come in Uganda. Kenya, Kenya, it's my year of manufacture right now, I think they only accept 2004, 2005. We have a slight uh, restriction in terms of tariff on, on, uh, on used vehicles, vehicles which are more than 8 years. I think we have a, what we call an environmental level because they tend to pollute the environment. When, when cars are older, they pollute the environment. Um, that in that regard, we we are trying to encourage newer vehicles, but the car industry is is, uh, is doing very well. Do you think it's enough just to pay twenty percent environmental tax, uh, irrespective of the effect that car is going to cause in the environment? It may not be uh, enough, but it's one way of discouraging importing old cars. Of course, uh, people go ahead and import old cars, but we had to start from somewhere giving that uh, uh, extra environmental tax to discourage you. Because someone who imports a new car, really he benefits. That 20% is not small. So that's the beginning. And of course, if it does not help, we may need to go back as policymakers and see how we change it.
revenue body, on the other hand, explains that a number of efforts are ongoing to streamline the car industry. And these include changing from a manual system of record keeping to an online system, which they argue is the best way to go. The new system had to dictate having also another type of logbook because we strengthened our system purposely to close the loopholes that we had in our system. We are using manual uh, system where you find that files will get lost. Information you have on the logbook, it's not the same that you have in the file. And you find that people are really, they don't know what to do. You own it, you have a car, the owner in the system is different, in the file is different. The logbook is talking of another person, the file is talking of another person. So that was majorly one reason why we had to have the e-system, uh, to be able to close that part of forgery. So we want people to own their vehicles as they are in the system, not having something here when you don't that behind it has changed. That's one reason. Secondly, of course, to provide best services. We want our people to get the services if you want to transfer your car, if you want to clear it uh, through our, uh, our offices. You just sit in your office, wherever you are, in your home, you apply online, you clear your, your, your vehicle, you instruct the transfer. So we are trying to make life easier for our clients. That's another second reason. The third one, of course, is to do business to, to reduce the cost of doing business. So we'd want, you don't need to get transport or drive your fuel and come to transact with us. Also on our side, we remove paperwork. So we are trying to see that business is done at a low cost. The taxes, must be fair to those people who are paying, to the payer. In this context, for the imported cars, we pay 25% of the VAT, uh, I mean of the import value, 18% of VAT, 6% withholding tax. There's a standard registration fee of 1 million plus, plus the bank charges. But with URA, they have what they call the value guidelines. There's a, a form already which you use for computing taxes. Because uh, you find that, if we are all, for this, especially for these new cars, you, you almost pay 52% of this cost insurance and freight value. But still, URA, they have got the, what they call their gui guidelines. Because after computing, using that formula, URA can tell you to top up the taxes. Which I think is not, which is I think is unfair. In that kind of view, that people bring so many vehicles, you are also considered that. I think it reads it in a perspective that people are now engaging themselves too much in that business. So, like right now, it is earning a lot. So that's why taxes they are a bit hiked. When you are importing, they charge you. VAT, that is what they call an import VAT. Still, when you are selling, you are, you are selling a product. Uh, every end of month, there is what they call the, 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 the monthly submissions. You pay a VAT on top of the vehicle. Say if you bought a vehicle at, I know, at 1 million and you sell it at 2 million, they charge you at the time when you, you imported it, at the time when you are selling. That's the difference. That's the difference between the VAT input and output. There's an allegation that some of the importers pay VAT. What is your take on this? I don't think there's anywhere you pay VAT twice. When you import a car, maybe I can try to explain to demonstrate that. When you import a car, at the entry point, you have to pay VAT plus other taxes, as I explained, and then at the time of sale, you are going to sell. For example, if I sell you my car, which I imported, and I paid maybe like 5 million VAT, now I'm going to sell the car, the component of VAT may be about 5.5. So what happens when I sell you, I will first pay myself back, because VAT works on input-output. So I paid 5 million, now I've sold my car to you, you paid me 5.5 VAT. I'll first remove my VAT, my 5 million, which I had paid at the entry point. So it's only the 500 difference. 
that I pay to URA. So at the end of it, you who bought the car, because VAT is a consumer tax, so you, you, the, 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 it's a consumption tax. You who bought the, the very last person, you're the one who pay me the exact amount. I'm just a middleman as an agent, maybe for URA, I could, I could use that word. So in short, you who paid 5.5, you're the one who has paid tax. But me, my work is to just to do that. I pay myself back. Then when it comes to the logbook, which is being printed, members actually, if I, if I would show you that uh, sample of the logbook, it's just like a mere people, uh, piece of paper. There's, it's not an authentic paper. There's no stamp. There's no stamp at all. There's no seal. Because these logbooks were used as securities, to the, especially some people, have, some clients have been using them, to borrow funds, but now even banks have suspended the lending of money because these paper, uh, these are uh, the logbooks. They are they are, they are they are not authentic. You are able to come up with new logbooks, mm. but some of the players are not comfortable with this. Have you heard of this complaint? Yeah, we've had a complaint. We have had complaints really that this logbook is the the, the paper is so they don't they don't see value in the paper. And we want to tell the public that the value shouldn't be in this paper that we give them. We've had uh, the old books that we used to use, but it never stopped them, and it had some value. You could look at it that it had security features. We tried to make it you know, good. But at the end, they would go and forge logbooks. You would not tell which is forged and which is not forged. The person would go and buy a car, basing on the logbook, not knowing that the value is not on the paper. The value is on that very car, the car that you are buying. So we are trying to tell the public that the value should be on the real item that you are buying. And secondly, the system, the information we have in URA should be the backbone of that item you have, but not the paper. We've seen people who come and use these, these logbooks to get money, loans from the banks, you get a loan, after you get the loan, maybe you fail to pay, you go back and uh, uh, announce that the logbook is lost, you go back to your RIA, you get a duplicate, because the law requires you to advertise in the newspaper. You advertise for just two weeks, whether you put it in a rumori, whichever paper, even if people don't read, you have fulfilled the requirement. At the end, you come back to your RIA, and you say, I lost my logbook, you attach the advert, and we give you a new logbook, duplicate. After getting the duplicate, you can either get another loan somewhere, or you sell it to someone, not knowing that there is a loan on that car. So we are trying to tell the public they shouldn't be cheated. Those are common cases. So people shouldn't be cheated from using that paper. We are trying to tell the public that the value is on the system, in the car, and the information is in the system. So, because we want to work well with our people, and because of the complaints, we have tried. We are going to improve on the quality of the paper we are giving them, the coloring, the, you know, the quality of the, the logbook. We are going to give them, but still, the information that we need people to know is that even if we have improved this logbook. You need to know that the information you have on this paper must be counter-checked with the information in our system. Another thing is that uh, we want people to own those vehicles that they have, not just this having a logbook. And the logbook, people have been taking it as like another asset. It's not an asset, really, it's not. So when you lose a logbook, it's like you've lost the car. So we are trying to tell the owners of the vehicles that the vehicle is still there and it is still having its value. Even if you've lost this paper, the information we have it. It's a matter of coming, you get another one. But people should be careful not to rely on this paper. Industry, because there are different associations which, uh, where they, they, which unites the, the car importers. But I think we need to as importers of, the, of vehicles, we need to have a forum whereby we can address our grievances.
to combine both the importers of new and the, the used cars. In fact, there is, there is a need to have put in place a new a regulatory authority for the vehicles so that the standards, maximum standards can be, can be set. And I will also urge the customers, while uh, they are applying for a loan, maybe for asset financing, they should try, I don't know how to put it, they should try like first come in the field, check the car, then they go, for, uh, they apply for the loan. Because some just go straight to the bank, apply for the asset, apply for, the, for that asset financing facility, whatever. Then the bank just wires the money. Well, he has not, he or she has not first checked the vehicle he is taking. At the end of the day, the bank will be blaming the company from which that customer bought the car. Let the public, let the motor vehicle owners be positive and be open and use this system. This is a very good system where you will be able to own your vehicle and you are 100% sure that it's your vehicle. You will be able to, when you have a car, you have a team. You have an account with us, you open an account with us. That vehicle, you can even put a caveat on it that no person should transfer it. That means you close it from any person who would want to get a loan, even if you lose your logbook. No one can use it for a loan. No one can transfer it without your knowledge. So it's something that it's available for everyone. You can use it. Let people come out and use the system. It's available 24 hours, whether in the night or any time. We have our team of supporting uh, the people who are waiting to support you at any time. We have our toll-free line, we have our email. People can consult and ask, and we help them to learn from, about this system. It's a very good one, really. People should try it. As we come to the end of this program, allow me to recap the key issues. It is important if you intend to buy a car to know the date of manufacture of that car because this has a bearing on the amount of taxes you will pay. If you're a car owner, Uganda Revenue Authority is issuing new logbooks. Check the URA website for details. And finally, the car industry is one of the most lucrative in Uganda. You might consider investing in it. Thank you for staying with us. Be blessed.